see over on the right, Todd Stevens carrying the team in that decisive comeback in the quarterfinals. Now they play for the trophy. Y you kind of can count on Todd Stevens, even though he's not playing modern, which is his usual format. Deck, deck creation tends to be one of his best skills. And when you have a really open meta game like this, it's where I like. I would think Todd Stevens is at his best. Yeah, he t tends to find lists that um, in modern plays decks that nobody else plays. As you can see in standard here, you find yourself in a mirror match. But taking advantage of some green and white synergies. Todd here, Thorn Lieutenant at, and uh, X2 in his hand, but he goes for a Sapperling Migration on the second turn. Deck has a number of Convoke spells, so getting tokens online makes a lot of sense. District Guide from Shoopman. A quick look at Todd's hand shows two Thorn Lieutenants, History of Banalia, and at least two copies of the or his Convoke removal spell. Conclave Tribunal. Yeah. Now the question is if he has another land, and I, I don't believe he does. Yeah, it doesn't even have the third land. Uh, this isn't where you're seeing District Guide be better than Thor Lieutenant. No. Um, Shoopman is getting to three lands, and then he guarantees land drops from there. So the District Guide is quite good. Some more Sapperlings move in on Todd's side of the board. Now, Stevens can actually cast Thor Lieutenant, where he couldn't yeah. cast a District Guide, but that's really the only advantage of that card. Shoopman's going to try for Shalai. So on Todd's side, while he doesn't have... He didn't have that land... He's going to go for History of Benalia. These t actually, these creatures will function as mana, as he can fully can go convoke a Conclave Tribunal. And he's going to do... Or... Or fully convoke a Venerated Loxodon and pump the entire team. And this will line up for some really yeah. good attacks next turn. And since his attacks will be so much better, all the creatures can at least trade with the District Guide. Then he'll Tribunal on the Shalai next turn. And you were saying most Anthems... Effects wins here. Well, Todd's got up right now winning 1-0 to zero on that count. Yep. Also is going to be churning out another token with that history, and he'll have some pretty good night attacks on the turn after that. Yeah, but Shubman's not going to be outclassed. We'll see some go wide on his side as well. I think Tristani... I almost know that's a Mara. I want to have, wondering if he can go tr something like Tristani into Venerated Luxodon here just to fight back. That would be a great turn. Amara quite a lot worse in this spot. Yeah. Still reasonable. Here's Legion's Landing. Oh, wow. See just how much stuff he has. Something like Legion's Landing, Amara, and then some Convoke spell for there would be uh -huh. quite powerful. And that's me, Legion's Landing, Amara. There is a Luxodon in his hand. Don't mind convoking that here. See, stuck with multiple Amaras. I believe that's some of the rest of the hand. It's three Amaras. That's... It's too many. That's no, too many. They are legendary. But when he convokes with Amara, he gets another token and then counters on everything. Todd, you know, helping him out. It's going to be... <laughs> and is that all for this turn? <laughs> we'll go back over to Todd. And we can try to Anthem every turn. It's going to be easier for Shoopman. Once he gets a land, Antheming every turn is just free. Yeah, Stevens has to get that Shalai off the table here. Here is Flower. Yeah, hoping he has that Conclave Tribunal. He definitely needs it, you're right. The Loxodon make his attacks a little bit worse. Um, just, not just because you have the 4-4 blocker, but the, the crackback is actually kind of a big deal now. Just large creatures on the other side of the table. Thorn Lieutenant for Todd. Let's see if he has that Tribunal. Yeah, since his attacks have gotten so much worse, it's fairly easy to convoke out the Tribunal from this position. So if he has it, I'd expect him to cast it. And we're convoking something. Let's see what we have. One, two, three. That looks like four. Yeah, we do have Conclave Tribunal. Shalai is gone, and that's going to have to happen. You can't have him activating that one over and over. Yeah, action was definitely forced there. Now we survey, are there any attackers? Luxodon is a 4-4, four -four, and Todd has nothing bigger than a 4-4, four -four, so he will pass. He, he could have swung his own Luxodon and offered the trade, and looks like he declines. Yeah, that, that attack is kind of whatever. The Luxodon has a blocker for things like that 2-2 lifelink token. 
Yeah. That's going to be good. Big removal spell for Todd as Eric does draw land six here. And, uh, if those cards are just two more Amaras, Shupin's in trouble. Look on his face kind of tells the story. I, I believe that those are just two Amaras. Shocked for a temple garden there. So if he shocks for temple if garden. It, if it's a march of the multitude, yeah. that, that's completely different. I'm going to say, well, it has to be something like that. I mean, March the Multitudes, the more I'm watching this matchup, uh, whew, I want to draw that card every turn. Yeah, that that's really just the <laughs> best card in the deck, yeah. right? When no one's playing removal spells, yeah, right now, Eric would march for eight. If Todd draws one, his is even better than that. Todd's would be for nine. So Todd has good attacks with his knights this turn. He's going to line up if he wants to make any other attacks. First result in Jody Keith takes game one with Eldrazi post. And that's kind of the matchup we assume is going to go that way. Another Throne Lieutenant for Todd. A Sapperling Migration. Two more 1-1s. One He's trying to go wide enough that even a March of the Multitudes from Shoopman is manageable. This is a mess. Yeah, there's March of the Multitudes. One... Three, and then he's going to convoke for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this means Shoopman's side of the board is 13 creatures wide. Todd's side of the board is 11 creatures wide. In these sorts of board stalls, usually it's it, it rarely makes sense to attack until right. one player is ahead by a lot. Mm-hmm. The lifelink on the soldier tokens changes that a little bit. The shootman's board is not wide enough to take advantage of that. Um, if he has a second march, mm. that just busts this open. Actually, it's a 14th creature on shootman's side as the Amara became tapped for that march. The, yeah, the second march, in these kind of matchups, that's a double march, feels unbeatable. Yeah. I mean, if you have two to their zero, the, the yep. game is over. If you have two to their one, the game might still be over. Yeah, as right now it's 14 creatures to 11, and then if Eric were to cast another one, he would make 17 more, he'd be at 31, he'd have 20 more creatures. That sounds like a great attack. It's a lot. History of Benalia from Eric. So what does that mean? Are we just kind of going to stare at each other until someone draws another march or uh, an anthem? A Tristan, yeah, a Tristani Discordant would be huge for Shootman. That makes his attacks just very good, especially because of the life licking tokens. Stevens is in a much worse position, even if he does produce an anthem, because he has a bunch of saplings. The lifelink on Shootman's, Shootman's tokens is a pretty okay. big difference maker. Now Todd draws and says go. Can anyone make a play? And you just, oh, wow, March of the Multitudes a second time. So by my count, it was tw he's going to have 31. It might be 30. Oh, gosh. We'll just look at this. So here's three, and he counts creatures. There's nine tokens. All right, let's count this with Todd. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tokens. Plus a Loxodon is 10. Amara is 11. Token is 12. District Guide is 13. Token is 14. So he gets 14 creatures plus a 15th from Amara. By their count, he has 26 one ones. So yeah, that is 31. Oh, that's all though. No, 31 creatures. Hold on. Todd has his blockers. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, I like this. There's 20 more attackers and blockers. Todd has 20 life points. You do have to be concerned about Todd having March. Oh, he does. He does. Okay, hold on. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. A, this is so good. What a matchup. <laughs> this, is, this is nice. Conclave Tribunal. Ooh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Todd needs to be concerned. Tribunal on Tribunal. This means that Shoopman will get back Shalai. Okay. Okay. Once you anthem oh, yeah, this once, many tokens, this is, yeah. that, that's the game. There's Shalai. It was going to get horrible and awkward I for a it. second. No, no, no. It was going to get It great. was about to be the worst match of my life, but the, the Shalai <laughs> cleans things up. Now everything has a 1-1 one, one counter. And they all swing. And there's creatures. Uh, everything on the board is one bigger than you expect it to be. Oh, now that we start doing this with the dice, it's really confusing. Um <laughs> So, um, okay, everything has a one counter on it, except that those tokens you see, that's representing quantity. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, so that token there, that is not a 2121. That, that's just, just 20 tokens there. Uh, given that Todd's March yeah. requires tapping blockers to make lifelinking blockers, I, I believe the game is still over in Shootman's favor. Confirming it sounds like a huge headache to me. So for here's some clarity. Black dice are going to indicate quantity. White dice are going to indicate number of 1-1 one, one counters. As you see now, they say that. That is 22 with a 1-1 one, one counter on it and 4 with a 1-1 one, one counter on it. We did it. Board is, this board is totally now. Unne it's it's now, obvious what's going on now. Everybody can keep up. <laughs> it's abundantly <laughs> clear what's happening. You have here. no reason to not be confused. I'll clear things up a little bit more. Shoot, the game is over. The game, the game's <laughs> actually over. <laughs> Todd Stevens is going to uh, spend some time confirming that. Um, Shoopman transformed his Legion's Landing because he attacked with three or more creatures. Looks like that. That's correct. I count one, two. <laughs> Okay, there's four pips on that one die. He transformed it <laughs> ten times. <laughs> Todd has a March of the Multitudes. That's the fun part. That's the fun part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I was sad that that Conclave Tribunal showed up because then the game got really difficult before it did. I just, uh, I could not m navigate that battlefield to save my life. It that's why. That's why I'd want to play it. That's why I'd love that. I let's let's both see. Let's both math. Let's I wanna, math real hard. I want to play that and red deck. <laughs> I want to. I want to do the math of cash shock. <laughs> what are you at? That's two. So Todd has a march of the multitudes now. Number of creatures. He has. 11 and 4 yes. lands. Yes. Oh. Yes. I didn't have to finish that sentence. Pick them up. <laughs> We're done. Todd has not enough life points. Eric Schutman's up one game to zero. Oh, thank you, Todd Stevens, for having the grace to concede that game. <laughs> it was definitely over. It was, it was just oh, definitely yeah. oh, over. Yeah. I mean, game one, when Todd can't top deck Cleansing Nova, yes, it's over. Right? What, how's he going to come back? What's he going to draw? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So... We've Things are going to get weird on both so, sideboards. So here's the lessons I've learned from that. Two March of the Multitudes is excellent. Yeah. Um, anthems are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Anthems are real good. Don't play the mirror match. Um, That's what I learned. <laughs> don't, don't register this is more Celestia fun the mirror when match. there's no sweepers. <laughs> the sweepers are going to be weird. Yeah. The post sideboard games, uh, <laughs> some options with the strategies that oh, their players are going to employ here. You only want a sweeper when you're losing. Correct. And you would rather be winning than and you're, losing. And I try to not build my <laughs> decks to lose. Yes. But sometimes they lose, so I need to have my sweepers? Yeah, so uh, oh, let's, uh, let's take a look at sideboards here. Yeah. So for Eric Schutman, he has three Lyra Dombringers, two Seal Aways, two Settle the Wreckage, two Shield Mayors, two Vivian Reed, a Cleansing Nova, a Tender Shoot Dryad, a copy of the Immortal Sun, and a Sorceress Spyglass. Immortal Sun, that's another Anthem effect. It draws extra card. That's one. That one's easy. That one makes a lot of sense. Settle the Wreckage is so awkward because you just give your opponent the mana back to marshal <laughs> the multitudes again. I, I um, don't feel good about that card. Well, I don't know. There are these... They're going to alpha strike. I guess the presence of Shalai makes me less in interested. Yeah, the fact that Shalai just shuts it off but is also a huge deal. If there wasn't Shalai in play, I, I do like Settle the Wreckage. Because that was attacks. Imagine that game, Ryan, with all these anthems and all these tokens. And then players can't all out swing. They have to half swing and can't mm -hmm. figure out how many to swing with. That just sounds great. It definitely changes the texture of things. <laughs> Um, I like the Tender Shoot Giant a lot. Just the yeah. army and a can effect. And wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see both players reaching for their cleansing Novas. I like Shootman's board, these one ofs, these Tender Shoot Dryad. And actually, Anthems look so good that the Immortal Sun seems fine. Oh, Immortal Sun seems like it's the best card in a sideboard, I, okay. I'm pretty sure, by a fair margin. No matter what's happening in the game, it'll generate some kind of advantage. Either you're able to shove with the Anthem or you just draw extra cards. I'm really curious about Lyra Dawnbringer. It yes. seems like it does enough. Uh, if the game is totally out of hand with tokens, it, it, it does not still beat that. But the thing is, both players are face-up sideboarding into potential sweeper effects and subtle yeah. wreckages, and that's going to temper the way that you play, which means that it's more likely that you'll play games where Lyra can be good. That was my thought exactly. If curving into Ly Lyra seems decent 
it's good until it's not, right? If we're playing anything that resembles a normal game of Magic, Lyra seems incredible in a green-white mirror, but when the games start getting really goofy, Lyra doesn't matter. Right. I can agree. I'd play one. I'd board them in. Yeah, and it's a card where you just attack with it until you get settled, and then once your Lyra is settled, it means that your 100 saplings or whatever are not getting settled. And uh, for Todd Stevens, his sideboard is largely similar. So he has three Seal Away, three Vivian Reed, two Dawn of Hope, two Night of Autumn, two Cleansing Nova, two Lyra Dawnbringers of his own, and a Settled Wreckage. So same kind of sweepers. He's got a different split. He has more Novas, fewer Settles. I think that that's just fine. Um, yeah, honestly, just the fact that your Settles don't give your opponent more lands. You have the two Cleansing Novas. I actually kind of like that a little bit better. Yeah. Night of Autumn's Destroy Conclave Tribunals. That card figures to be pretty good. Yeah, the the advantage on that seems relevant. Uh, you can even hit an Immortal Sun. Yep. I do like the Dawn of Hopes. If you find yourself in a situation, you just have some extra mana, yeah. make tokens. Especially if you have a Lyra, you draw some extra cards with the Dawn of Hope. So it's four mana to it's activate? Yep, four mana to make a token, two mana to draw a card when you gain life. Yeah, I think you can draw a card. The drawing extra card seems great. Four man to make a token feels like a rate that is never going to be good enough in this matchup. You'll generally have better options. Yeah, but extra cards, especially when cards like mul like March of the Masses, Multitudes. the Multitudes, yeah, I'm going to do that all day. March <laughs> of the Multitudes exist where this one card is so much better than all the other cards. I I'm interested in some extra card draw. Yep. Yeah, you won't always have great attacks with uh, lifelinking tokens, but that's another thing to like about the Dawn of Hope is you just churn out a lifelinker to throw away to draw a card sometimes. Well, if you want to catch up on all the action from this weekend, we had a lot of good looks at Standard, uh, some of these new decks. Do you have a favorite one from the weekend that you saw on camera? Uh, just a Standard deck? Yeah. I'm intrigued to refine... I'm going to say Andrew Tenjum had the deck that I would like to see what the best version looks like. Yeah, that was he was playing a Sultai control deck. It was based in Mirror, splashing green for Vraska Relic Seeker, and played four treasure maps. And I feel like treasure map, based on how good it looked every time we saw one cast, is absolutely underplayed in this format. The deck I want to look at is... It was the Celestia Tokens build, but the Zan Sayed build of it. It was so different than all these other Celestia decks we've seen. Yeah, it's got the same payoffs, but I feel like he's... I, he, He's done some innovation to help it up out against the red deck in a big way. Yeah, and uh, all kinds of other standard decks. Another fun match we watched this weekend, Jeff Hoagland playing against Five Color Battle of Wits. Yeah. Uh, some long shuffles happening. So You'll be able to find all those on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash starcitygames. We have replays of our opens uh, condensed by decks and players. You can also find our Versus series, Flashback, and a whole lot more. So make sure you're subscribing to us over at, star at youtube.com starcitygames. All kinds of great content, really. Game two is going to put Todd on the play, and there we go. Those early turns didn't feel like they mattered so much. No. Last time. <laughs> and in fact, that was one of the things about Steven's main deck that didn't seem great is he registered Thorn Lieutenant. This is just not a matchup where you're connecting mm. with your 2-3. Well, we have Amara from Todd and a pass. I mean, we haven't really seen this happen yet with the card where it actually can just attack in and get some free 1-1s. One That's what we have. Sends him to 18 and makes a token. Yeah, starts ramping him up to set up for maybe a earlier March of the Multitudes later. Yeah, Sapling Migration adds two Sapperlings. And already we have four creatures on one side. Well, they all died of Cleansing Nova just the same, <laughs> right? Here is district our guide. district guide, yeah. The new Borderland Ranger. Haven't seen it grab a guild gate just yet. It can do that. But uh, these players are just just basics and temple gardens, sun petal groves. Some big wins over on Shoopin' side. Both his teammates check in with a win for Lucas Parson. Game one goes to humans. And the big one, Victor Logan, forces a game three. If they can win that legacy matchup, that would be huge. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the way the cards line up, there was some concern that Jody Keith and Collins Mundlin were going to run away with this. But that is not what's playing out. No play that turn from Todd. Yeah, no good attacks into this district guide, and even if he has a Conclave Tribunal, it's a lousy target. Here's Shalai from Shoopman. Question is, does Todd have March of the Multitudes? 
Yes, he does. It's going to be for four. Plus. In, yeah, in a way it's for five. Yeah. Then Amara makes another token, so. Six creatures. That's we've been doing the, the black dice for quantity. We did this. Developed that one last round. Some <laughs> new technology for <laughs> covering Magic the Gathering games. Brought to you by the Celestia Guild. <laughs> Ooh, a pass. Is this another march? It certainly oh. could be. I know that he oh passed on casting his own copy of Shalai. I almost want to say it's got like two more marches in the hand. Oof, I, I can o one can only hope. I mean, you almost can just march and then full convoke the second march that turn. Yeah, how many tokens yeah. is he making here? He's making ten, and then you can mm -hmm. make seven more. Here's a question. Lyra Dawnbringer just gave Shalai a plus almost one on lifelink, sending Eric to 22. If Todd has two more March of the Multitudes, can it overpower this board? Because this board is a ton of life gain. So the first March is good for 11 creatures because of the Amara. And then the second one will be good for eight more. So you have 19, 25, 26, 27, 28, yeah. 29. Mm -hmm. um, you can block a two power creature. It's not there, is it? And then gain five. Uh, I think that, does that? I don't think it's enough. Well, he didn't have a second March, it looks like. So we, third, yeah, we're going to have 17 tokens, so it's 20 creatures total on Todd's side. So we'd make 21 more, 22 more with Amara. And you're really seeing the efficacy of District Guide for Shoopman. Stevens is missing his fifth land drop. If he ha yeah, I want to go if he had one more. He'd be up to 42 creatures, which should be actually enough to, to make the Alpha Strike. Mm-hmm. As it stands, you can cast a Shalai and be well off of activating it. What he was looking for, it looks like Ryan's follow-up was not another March, but it was a Tristani. Yep, that would have been really good. So here's a swing, but it may not be enough. Amara adds in another token. So it's an attack with 20 creatures. Eric can block two. So blocks Lyra to Amara, District Guide to a token. First strike, Eric goes to 27 and Amara dies. Then we get to regular damage, a token dies. But we do have 18 getting through, which means Eric goes down to 9. And Todd Stevens is going to gain 17 life, go to 33. We did it. We, <laughs> we figured out combat. Here's a Shalai of Todd's own. That is significant in inroads for Stevens. Uh, Shootman has access to 9 lifelink here. Lyra plus Shalai. I suppose he could have a Shalai activation on top of that if he liked. Yeah, so that would be 11 lifelink. Yeah, I mean, without a sweeper, it's still pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Now, Todd doesn't is not threatening a Lyra Anthem effect next turn. What he does have, however, is Tristani Discordant, which is almost certainly lethal. It also plays through Settle because he played Shalai last turn. Right. Now, Todd does not have land five yet. So, we'll see what Eric wants to do. Makes his sixth land. He'd still have to be a little wary of a March of the Multitudes. From Stevens? Or from Shootman? For, from Shootman, if he made the attack next turn. D it depends how much... If Shootman attacks here, I guess he can't march for almost any. He only has three creatures. And the Tristani makes just the numbers so high. So... Probably not too much to be concerned about. Now, this is interesting. We talked during sideboarding about whether or not Lyra would be good. And this game, it's like a C, you know? Yeah. He would have rather have drawn Cleansing Nova, I can tell you yeah. that much. Yeah, uh, unclear how good it actually is right now. Yeah, it, it just lines up so much better against literally every other standard deck. Yeah. And he's going to swing. I think much of swinging the lifelinkers. And I think he may... It I, looks like he's going to sweep away his own board after this. Never mind. He's going to swing and pump the team. And why not? In the air, that's 11. Todd down to 22. Eric up to 20. All right. So how does... This look with just the district guide as the blocker. So we have one it's block 19, on the tokens. Yeah. That's no, yeah, no, that's, that's too much. It was actually Todd had 
exactly. Uh, that was actually just. He was, I think he was just dead. Yeah, I, I think that that attack didn't do anything for him. Because it was three damage in the air from the Shalai. Right. Can only block a token. So okay. there's 13 coming across off of the one stack and the two saplings, and then there's yeah. another token to the side. That That's 19, right? So he, so he goes to one? Okay, so he was, he was one shy without the Tristani? I think so. Uh, Conclave Tribunal could have broken. There was a lot that could have broken that yeah. up, though. Yeah. If Eric has the Cleansing Nova, as gross it is, as it is, he might be, it might be just the correct play to swing, and then post-combat sweeps the team. Yeah. Bad as it feels. Yeah. So we Todd Stevens evens things up at one game apiece, which I assume, I don't know how much of the mirror, I mean, this is the first time we've seen it. I don't know how much of it they played it. This is a really new deck. <sighs> On that game, I think I want to put the Lyras back in the box if I brought him in. Is that too much? Well, the thing about it is... What we've seen is two games that were completely dominated by one player drawing more copies of March of the Multitudes. Yeah, two more. Exactly. Not just one more. Yeah. And there's going to be games where neither player does that. And actually, one player doing it's fine as long as the other player has, like, it's, you have to, if you have two, you know, if you play two and I play one, it's probably fine. Right. What I'm going to tell you to a certainty, this matchup does not test many of the player's technical play skill. What you yeah. have to do is outdraw your opponent. You really well, can't yeah. cheese them. There's some interesting attacking and blocking. Yes. It's not a brainless matchup. You will be taxed in some ways. But more than anything, you have to maximize your deck's ability to generate significant advantage just off the raw power of your cards over your opponents. And in the games where your opponent is not marching, you're not marching, Lyra does that. Yeah. I don't, yeah, it's... The skills being used here are really interesting. I mean, you said, like, it's, it's about card draw, so... You're right. The, uh, you know, both players are kind of just like sorcery speeding, casting stuff back and forth. There are things where, like, if you have a Conclave Tribunal, you know, how much can you hold it? There will be things like that where, you know, I, I could do a lot of damage by removing your blocker, but then you might Tristani me, and that card is just that important. I think there's this, these really interesting decisions on those lines that the players can make. Mm -hmm. Um but you are right. There's a lot of just kind of big haymakers flying back and forth. Right. And the games go long-ish, but not long yeah. enough that you're guaranteed to draw a march. I mean, we saw that... Yeah, they have to be in your opener. I mean, you're drawing one card a turn, and there's... If you're behind, you're going to lose pretty quickly. Right. So you can't just... I don't think, I don't think you can stall out until March. I don't think that's a thing. Right. Um. And also for Shootman, we saw him start on District Guide that game. If he had more token blockers, the Lyra would have been a lot better. Flower turn one from Shootman. He has drawn, and speaking bow about waiting and outdrawing your opponent, as they have Todd Flowers as well, uh, he has the Immortal Sun in his opener. That's a good one. Yeah. There's a few things that destroy it, but if it goes unchecked, that is a very powerful card. Offers the Anthem if you have enough tokens to start making good attacks. And the one-sided Howling Mind is quite powerful as well. And if he can make land drops, I, there's this setup with Shoopman where he has Cleansing Nova into Immortal Sun that I'm pretty excited about. Just, oh, yeah. You, it actually allows him to play from behind, which is something we haven't seen either player do yet. Right. Todd makes Thorn Lieutenant. That'll hold off Shoopman's Amara pretty well. Yeah. 2-3 Rocker quite good against the 2-2 creature. And we have an Arch of Araz cut for Shoopman. That may be his last land for now. Perhaps he can't really decide whether he's drawing more lands or not. You know, if he can curve all the up to 6 on turn 6, I think he's pretty into it. Yeah, he's got a good mix of spells, and he is the player that registered District Gods, so his deck is on average better at making those land drops, but he is fully capable of missing. Todd, meanwhile, has a land in hand, but he's going to get another one. Cast his own Amara. No big plays just yet. Uh, not, an, yeah. not a big reason to attack with a Thorn Lieutenant. You probably just hang that back to block the Amara for now. Yeah, I, I feel like the chip damage you could get 
is worth less than the extra 1-1 one, one Eric might get on the following attack. Yeah, I, I would say that the chip damage is worthless. Yeah. <laughs> and we do have an end step March of the Multitudes for one from Shoopman. Gets two one ones though, as Amara was helping to convoke it. And is that a miss on lands for Shoopman? I believe it is. And it looks like he does have another March, but it's not for a very big amount. I mean, it'll it'll give him the city's blessing, but can't really tap that Archer Razka. He just passes. And when you have no action going and you're not able to cast all these great spells, one thing you can draw to is just have a bunch of marches. Uh, they snowball if that's all you're able to cast, but yeah, not clear that he has an avenue to win the game without making land drops. Well, I guess we'll see what Todd does here. You know, if Eric's plan is to play from behind and sweep into Immortal Sun, falling a bit behind here is actually just fine. Yes. But only a bit behind. You don't, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and you see Todd, for example, now is, is clearly ahead. He makes Sapling Migration into a four-convoke venerated Loxodon. So, you know, an 8-8 eight, eight for five here. Mm -hmm. Starting next turn, Stevens will have some pretty good attacks. March the Multitudes for three. Amaro will make that four for Shoopman. Plenty of chump blockers for a while, depending on what Todd has. Mm -hmm. So I was talking about how just kind of going off with marches, if he doesn't make land drops, could give him an avenue to win the game. But if you spend these marches and you still have to Cleansing Nova later, yeah. then they're just wasted. And Todd gives him the City's Blessing token. Sapling Migration, the draw from Shoopman. Yeah, I mean, they're right, they're life gain spells at that point. Right, and, but he's, he's missing these land drops, so... Yeah. In a lot of trouble. I still think if his deck can deliver on the next three turns, three lands, he's got a pretty reasonable line in this game, but that's becoming less and less likely. Right. And he's going to attack. Yeah, his blocks aren't great here. The tokens have lifelink, so attacking and blocking, not super different. So six creatures with lifelink in. We'll see whether Todd wants to trade down the tokens, or tr this is actually interesting, an interesting dis blo blocking decision, the kind you were talking about. Uh, whether or not to, tr to the, you know, you're going to block one of the Luxodon. Do you want to trade down a pair of tokens? Um, it's not always clear in this matchup what the answer to that is. Mm -hmm. Looks like Todd chose to. He went to 17 at the end. So a lot of lifelink. And now Sapling Migration makes some more 1-1s one for Shoopman. Yeah, and I, and I like that exchange for Stevens. So yeah. Doesn't have a way to grow that token just yet. So just trade it away. Send the bleeding because your attackers don't have lifelink. Yeah, he does have the size advantage right now. So his creatures that helped convoke that Luxodon now all two twos. Todd's hand, Shalai, two it looks like Shalai History of Benalia, Cleansing Nova, and I believe March the Multitudes. So some extra pressure here now on Todd Stevens. Our modern match has finished. And it is Lucas Parson on Humans with the Win. So both Todd and Jody will need these game threes. 2-0 win for humans over burn. Uh, it seems like that was one of the reasons for Mullen to play his deck, but, you know, it's modern. Anything goes. Humans is a great deck. It can win its bad matchups. Amara and Loxodon are the attacks for Todd. 4-4 four, four and 3-3. Three, three. may see Shootman trade away this Amara. I believe he has another one. Right. Also, when your opponent's attacking with their Amara, it makes a lot of sense to catch it in combat just because it gets a little bit better every time it attacks. That said, it looks like Eric's going to take the full hit. Goes to 19. Todd will make Shalai. But he doesn't have land 5, so he's not threatening that Anthem effect just yet. Yeah. All that does is turn off Saddle. It gives a flying attacker, but... And did we see a land we do from Shoopman? That is the draw he wants. Looks like Temple Garden. And this fourth land is going to give Todd pause and maybe some regret yeah. about uh, deploying that Shalai. Yeah, it means if both players run lands on curve, Shoopman will hit the Cleansing Nova before Todd hits that Shalai activation. And looks like no concern. Lyra, the draw for Todd. But Ooh. a shake of hands. Did, did Victor Logan take this one down? It seems like and it. And it is. Jody Keith. He's going to, does not get it done with a post, so Grixis Control takes it, and that is going to be 
the end. It's a team of Victor Logan, Lucas Parson, and Eric Schupman. They are your Columbus Open champions. Thanks.